Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome back to Punk Rock Radio, where today we are going to rank and file 14 anti flag records. So buckle up, get comfortable, and enjoy the show. What's up, everybody? Like Lewis said, we're going to be ranking all the anti flag records today. We've got 14 records. We're going to do two in the S tier and three in every other tier. We're going to talk about each of them in chronological order and rank them S through D. So I'm joined by Matt and Lewis. Matt, how you doing, man? Yeah, I'm doing good, man. I'm doing good. I'm ready to uh, rank these albums and file them, as Lewis said. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I'm doing good. How about you, Lou? Uh, doing okay. Uh, gave me an excuse to get re- reacquainted with uh, Anti-Flag again, a band that I definitely fell off on in the past few years. Uh, although you will see... I was a pretty big fan. I got all these anti flag vinyls just laying around. So let's talk about them and have a good time. All right. Well, you just showed it. Why, why don't you take us right into uh, the first one here? Die for the government. What are you doing with it? I guess we'll get them there. We got Die for the Government on a uh, Soviet red vinyl here. Uh, so. Uh, this is going to be from 1996. Um, this is Andy Flagg's debut album. I believe it's the only, well, it's the only full length with Andy Flagg on it, right? Which was their original co-singer. Mm. Um, this is obviously like, I think one of the albums that we definitely all had growing up. So there's definitely some bias in here for me, but I'm keeping everything in the scope of all of what's coming and what's coming after. Uh, this one, after re-listening to it again now, it holds up pretty well. I think it's a really solid debut full-length LP. I'm giving it an A. And obviously it has Annie Flagg's most famous song on there with Die for the Government. Still to this day, probably their most famous song, despite what Spotify says. But um, yeah, that's my ranking. Yeah, so uh, this one, uh, what Lewis said, I agree with. Um, you know, we all have this album, so there's some nostalgia there with it. You know, some great songs on here. Um, I wish Die for the Government was actually the first song, the intro song, and then You Do the Same would be the second one. I think that would have made a better album intro. Uh, and I wish there were seven probably less songs on here. Uh, yeah. So I'm, <laughs> I'm making this, I'm going to put this one in D just for the length. Uh, way too many songs. Yeah, I agree with Matt. I'm going B on this as well. I, I rarely ever come back to this one anymore. I, I know we have like memories and stuff for it, but it's just not one that I spin regularly. Like doing this list was the first time I listened to it in like 10 years outside of the title track. So I'm going to go B here also. Like Matt said, there's a ton of filler uh, on this album. But Matt, if you want to take us now into the next one, which is like kind of like a, a comp, I guess, their system doesn't work for you. Where are you putting it? Yeah, the system doesn't work for you, or their system doesn't work for you. I'm actually putting this one in C. Again, this one probably has eight too many songs on here. Uh, I think they, you know, they they had to figure out how to balance out this album and the first one with like songs. Like they could have taken some off. I think a lot of these could have been B sides on here. Uh, so I'm putting this one in C. I'm not a really big fan of it. Hi, right, Lewis. What All about right, you? So- <laughs> Yeah, I mean, a lot of these are filler because it was from two different records. Like, so. some of it was new and some of it was old. I mean, with that in, in mind, I, I do like this record. I mean, I definitely like the first half better than the second half, which was, like, I guess the previously released stuff. Um, once again, I have a pretty... As we get passed into the mid-aughts of 2000, I'm going to get pretty negative here. So uh, this one uh, kind of has to be a B for me, uh, and it's a low B. So I'm going to put it as a B-. minus. Yeah, I'm going with Matt here. I'm going C. Uh, I I rarely listen to Die for the Government, but I never listen to this one. Like the only songs that like I kind of recognize, like if I hear them, like Indie Sucks, Hardline Sucks, of course. Mm-hmm. And there's like a few decent tracks on here, but C is where it belongs, in my opinion. And I think that it gets a lot better. I'll just take us in the next one here on uh, the follow up, which is gonna be. Uh, a New Kind of Army came out in 1999, so a year after this one. This is For me, this is a huge step up. I mean, Tearing Everyone Down, Captain Anarchy, lots of good songs. I think this is the first one I heard. I don't know about you guys, but this is going to be my first A-tier Annie Flag record. I think this holds up much better than the previous two. Uh, Lewis, what are mm. you doing with this one?
Yeah, so this one was one that I really went back and forth on. Um, this was almost in my S tier. I love this record. Um, so for me, it's going as an A. It was definitely my first anti-flag record that I owned. Uh, and I actually, I think I got this vinyl when I worked at Go-Kart, which is pretty fun still. Uh, but yeah, overall a great record. I, I, I was really shocked to find online that this one's not really well regarded, um, I guess. But I think it's awesome. So, A. All right, Matt. What about you? Well, I think you're both wrong. This is an S album. Uh, can you name me an album that has better, I guess, seven songs in a row by Andy Flag? We can even go eight songs or nine songs in a <laughs> row. I mean, I mean I can, another I think, down, Captain Anarchy, New Kind of Army, That's Youth, No Apology, Got the Numbers, No Difference, I Don't Believe, Right On, What You Don't Know, Free Nation, Outbreak, Police Story. I mean, and then uh, this song probably has the best... Uh, I guess, lineup of any anti-flag album, I would say. I don't think there's another anti-flag album that has this solid songs back to back to back to back to back. Uh, and that's why I'm putting this one in S. All right. That's, that's, I was worried we were all going to have the same S, so that, that's pretty rad. But Matt, since I, I, it's a little spoiler, my first S is going to be the next one. Where are you going to put uh, this one, Underground Network? The clouds come up from the clouds, underground network. Yeah, Underground Network is an S2, so I feel like these two albums are Anti-Flag's best. Uh, I would say New Kind of Army is a little bit better than Underground Network, so I would say uh, this is also an S, Underground Network, too. But I feel like the if you're going song by song off of these, I would say, again, New Kind of Army has the best track list, I think, in order, going in order, no skipping. All right, Lewis, where, where are you putting this one? The Fat Wreck debut. I, we have so many memories with this one, so I'm curious where you're going to say it. Yeah. This one is also an S for me. Um, and going to Matt's point about In Order, I think this album's really strong in that regard, too. So like I said, I, New Kind of Army was almost my S. And I went with this one and then picked a later S. But this one, uh, I love almost i think up to like i think i like every song in this record but man i even forgot about how good songs like the panama deception are that song is so mm. sick and it's like deep back in there spaz's house destruction party as well that one was definitely one that we glommed on to great album definitely a lot more polished than the previous two records as well definitely got some of that money from fat wreck it's an s for me yeah it's it's an s for all three of us the one that like I, I don't remember, like, I, I would always listen to, like, Angry Young and Poor and the title track, but mm -hmm. Cultural Revolution down, like, on the back half, I think is another really good one. And maybe I didn't listen to as much as I should have, but yeah, like, it's been a while since I gave that an honest listen, and I still love every minute of that album. It's an easy uh, S tier. But uh, let's, let's move on here. We're gonna, we've got a mini album. We've got Mobilize from 2002, which is, like, half live, half... New songs and Lewis, I'll let you take us into this one. Uh, how do you feel about it? So, Mobilize and their system doesn't work for you are really similar for me. Um, uh, you know, I mean, I think it's a different spirit, obviously, because half the live and uh, half the album's live. Um, I gave this one a C. It, most of the new songs. Are like okay but they sound like they're probably like leftovers from the underground network recordings like i don't know if that's true but they don't sound as good as like none of the songs are as good as the songs that made that album and it was the follow-up so it leads me to believe this is a b-side <laughs> album so it's a solid c like i i still like this record and i bought it when it came out um i have it on cd somewhere but yeah c for me yeah that's exactly what i wrote down it sounds like underground network b-sides i think 911 for peace is a, is a pretty good song and uh, like the first three are actually all pretty good, but I'm going C also on this one. I, I was debating B, but I'll drop it in C. Matt, where are you putting Mobilize? Yeah, I have this one in C as well. It's just, uh, I don't know, just the live songs. I mean, like have, we've all seen Anti-Flag Live, so, but uh, yeah, it's a C. I mean, it does sound like... So many times. Yeah, so many times. <laughs> and like, if you've never seen them live, like I would say... Like, I would say 70% of the show is on this talking, which is kind of <laughs> shitty, and it's a waste of my money. Uh, and then, you know, the rest is just them playing music. So if you really want to listen to them talk and speak, great concert. Uh, if you want to listen to play music, just listen to them on a record or, like, a CD and save your money. Yeah, or you could just read. I forget which one of these albums. Louis, you have them all in front of you. One of these has, like, a 30-page 
<laughs> booklet of like essays and stuff, but I don't know. I gotta look. So some maybe it's terror state. So somebody's reading all that stuff, but it's it sure as hell isn't me or Matt. <laughs> but uh yeah. Uh Lewis, the terror state, this this came out when all all three of us were seniors in high school. This is probably the one that I think we saw them the most on this tour. Like this is probably like the height of their popularity, uh, in my opinion. But uh, Lewis, I'll let you walk us through this one here, Terror State. What are you thinking about it? So I feel like a lot of people really think this album is incredible. I think it's pretty good. Uh, I mean, it's better than good. I'm going to give it an A. Uh, I think it's definitely overrated, and I think it's probably because the first two tracks are probably two of the most memorable anti-flag songs, and I think... That the energy from those first two tracks really carries it kind of the rest of the way but i really feel like this uh it kind of becomes more of a snooze fest towards the end of the album but it's still pretty good uh so compared to like some of the other stuff they did i'm putting i'm putting this one in a and uh you know and if we remember this is the album cover that got like what it got a uh, blacked out yeah. at, like <laughs> it was just Best a black sticker stuff. yeah yeah oh yeah, yeah that's right <laughs> yeah all right, Matt, Terror okay. State, again, you know, lots of memories of this one. Where are you putting it? Yeah, in? yeah, lots of memories. I think we saw them with the Bouncing Souls with this one. Was it Andy Five Bouncing Souls or no? Maybe I'm making I don't it know. I've seen them like a bunch yeah. of times. Yeah. But yeah, this one, this one I'm putting in A. This is a solid album. Uh, going into A, um, I was thinking about S, but uh, yeah, no, this is, this is definitely an A when I was listening to this over and over the week. Um, like we said, you know, as you start going through, it kind of gets a little... Uh, you know, a little boring a little bit, but um, I think it's better than any of their newer stuff. So this is going into A. Yeah, I, I'm going A also, so we're all the same. But I, I kind of have like a completely different view on this that Lewis said. Like, I think the back half is where the good songs are. Like the last few songs, Tearing Down the Borders, Death of a Nation and Operation Iraqi Liberation. Those are yeah. like three of my favorite songs on the album. But so I don't know. I mean, I I know Turncoat is like the single, and then of course Rank and File, mm-hmm. but File, oh, yeah, those those. I mean, like I don't, I don't, I gave it an A, John. What do you want from me? <laughs> no, Come I'm on. saying I agree, but I Walk you like the back end. Okay, I, I like the back end tracks better. That that's all I'm oh, saying here. <laughs> I do love the uh, well, what's uh, so definition tear down the borders? Yeah, okay, what it, but I like fuck the flag, uh, which is on only on like the. First few releases, I guess, and then also on the, the vinyl. That's a good song, and that's on the back end. So I'll give it some love. So, all right. So here we go. This is we're getting to that point now. We're on the the major label debut, the big one for these guys. The band that uh, a few years before had Underground Network, Alternative Communication. We had a song NBC, No Bloodthirsty Corporations. Now here we are on uh, Radio Corporation of America, aka RCA Records. Matt, I'm going to let you walk us through this one first for Blood and Empire from 2006. Yeah, uh, This one really broke my heart when I was younger, John. I, I woke up one morning. You guys told me Andy Flag's making a major label. And I said, no, they wouldn't do that. They're anti-flag. They hate major labels. They hate government. They hate big business. They hate everything. And, well... That was all a lie. They <laughs> love making money and they love big corporations and major labels and they signed to RCA and put out kind of a stinker. Uh, I'm putting this one actually as a B. I'm putting this in my B. Um, you know, I don't know. If they had, I don't know, one trillion dollars, like that song is just like so cringy. It's like something Justin Bieber would have wrote, I feel like. I'm surprised, like, I don't know. It's just a B album. It's just mediocre at its finest, I think. Damn, all right. Well, I'm pretty sure Lewis and I <laughs> just like, Lewis, I, I'll, why don't you take take it from here? Because I, I think you and I see eye to eye on this one. I feel all the same things that Matt said, and I definitely was not interested in this record when it first came out because of all that shit that Matt said, you know, because we felt like they were selling out. And I don't think I really gave this album a really fair shake when it first came out. And then... uh I, during this thing, and I'd list, I'd own the record. I went back and listened to it today, I'd li- the this past few weeks. And god damn, this album's an S for sure. Uh, this what? album, yeah. yeah this this album is this a joke. No, I mean this album rips. Yeah. I mean it's 
It's really good. I mean, I don't like one trillion dollars that much. I mean, that's obviously a song that is put so on. So that shouldn't make it an make S then. Because well, does it have one good song? S is top tier. Every song you can listen to back to back, front to back. I could still right. listen to it. I probably wouldn't love it, but yeah, this is an S. I mean, every. I mean, the first two tracks on this song are some of the best anti flag songs. I think. I think, and then especially even going into the back end. I mean, this album. The only stuff I don't really like on it maybe is uh, what's uh, what is uh, yeah, I don't like Emmy Gray that much either. Yeah. So I'll put that one because we were just shitting on that one earlier. But yeah, this one's an S. I think this is it's very surprisingly a really good record put out on a major label. So John, yeah. I'm, I'm I guess you have the same feeling. I don't understand how you put this as S, like when you're saying that there's some shitty songs on there, and you didn't put like you know new kind of army as S when there's no bad song on there. Oh, I mean, th- there might not be no bad songs on New Kind of Army, and I like all the songs, but the songs that are better are on this one, so it's a higher rank. I mean, that's kind of I the don't way know. it kind what of goes I look at it like- this, was, this was the one that I went back and forth with the New Kind of Army is between Oof. S and A. These were like my two that I was deciding. I think I told you this, John. Like, mm. I was like kind of on the border of like figuring it out. So, so you really I went- think this is better than New Kind of Army in this album, both of you? Every song. Yeah. So every song, if we did 15 for 15... So if you matched up every song and you went across, you can tell me that every one of these songs is better than any song on New Kind of Army. I don't think that's the definition of S. Yes, it is. Here. S is top, and the best. Overall, coll- collectively, this is a better album, which is why I'm... And it's way better, way better produced, too. Yeah. I mean, so that's part of it, too. I mean, the production value helps so as well. A, so that, like, better produced. So you would say this is a better album than Dookie because Dookie wasn't produced that well. I mean, I like. I don't think this is a better album than Dookie. But no. you're taking it. I'm just saying, like, how much does that take off? Like, you got to. I'm just talking. We're just, you're saying I'm just taking. We're talking about the individual fe- facets of the album yeah. that might make it better. I, I'm just. I'm just. I lo- All right, let's go into the next one. We're hold hold on, hold on, Matt. I just, I'll just say this quick. Like, when when you're going to like contradict yourself as much as Annie Flag did. The only thing they could have done here was knock it out of the park or completely sink. And yeah. I, I just want to say that I, I think here they absolutely knocked this out of the park. Like Confessions of an Economic Hitman is probably other than the first oh, that two. Sounds awesome. That song is so freaking good, man. Like this Yeah, but like I don't know. I love so, this I'm, album. Believe believe me, like when you when you're anti flag in your first decade as a band are shitting on corporations and then you sign to a major corporation, like my gut reaction is like, oh, this is, this is, you know, I'm not even going to listen to it, but it was so good that I can look past all that like garbage and hypocrisy and just see this for like just a really good like rock album. Yeah. I, I was... and, and, and production. And by the way, Matt, production, I wasn't just talking about like sonically, like, I mean, like the songwriting and stuff is way more matured than like a new kind of army. Well, yeah, too. They, they I mean, probably like... had about 50 songwriters for them. Oh, I don't know if that label. songwriter. <laughs> that's that's not how they probably had people writing this shit for them. I mean, let's get. I don't real. know. It, did, it didn't really work out. I don't so know. it's to me like this is a, to me yeah. like when I say S, that means there's nothing better like song. I mean, like it's like you can't go any higher than S. So if there's some bad songs on the album, it can't be an S because that's gonna take it down. So you have to look at is every song in my mind is every song good? Can I listen to every song? Can I listen without skipping? Right, so if you're saying that this is an S, you can listen to this front and back without skipping any song. Dude, there's any day of the week where I might skip a song on a new kind of army, though. <laughs> but that's what I'm saying, though. Like, I don't know, I don't know. Anyway, we're gonna go into the next one. I, it's I, also I, name of the game. We had to have S's, so it's better if we all yeah. both have the same two. Here. So I mean, like, what is this for you guys? A, like, I have this one coming up next. What is this one? The bright lights of America. Well, I don't have I don't have any A's left, so it's not gonna be an A for me. Matt, yeah, why, so, take us into it. Keep keep your role yeah. going on this one. Yeah, I, so, I mean, the housing market crash really must have hurt them on this one because this album fucking sucked, right? Mm-hmm. 2008, this came out when the uh, the economy was crashing, housing market crashed. I'm putting this one as C. It's just a shit record. Like, the, what are they trying to do? Like, I, I don't know, like, be a rock band now? Like, this is like when they went through that rock phase, like, like their midlife crisis, I feel like. They want to be a rock band or, or be like... Uh, uh, play at a stadium band, you know, like a stadium band. I feel like these next two albums are like their stadium albums. Um, so I'm putting this one in C. It's just not good. All right. 
Lewis, how do you feel about Bright Lights of America? I mean, I don't really like this record either, but I think compared to like some of the later stuff that's coming up, because my list is obviously <laughs> taking shape. I got to give this one a B. Uh, I don't love it, but I certainly would listen to it before a lot of the later records. So it's getting a B. It's probably more of a B minus, C plus. Yeah, I'm, I'm going D on Bright Oof. Lights. I, I really don't like this one at all. And I think part of it is because it comes directly after my favorite uh, anti-flag record just to remind matt again so like the fact that like <laughs> it's so bad like the fact that it's like so mediocre coming after something that i felt was so strong it, it hurts mm. it in this case mm. and like even the songs i like like uh spit in the face it would be a good like one minute song but it's four minutes and if you look at this track list we got 12 songs 48 minutes so it's four minutes per song it's yeah. just it is just dragged out and boring like i i think the title track is okay bright lights of america the song, yeah, song. decent the rest mm. uh not so much and but yeah yeah i just i don't know i mean I, there's i we're kind of showing our hand here with matt's deck there i don't know what his other a's are gonna be but but like <laughs> this just going back though john so you <laughs> so you see what happened like from uh for blood and empire was so mediocre that it carried over into the next album where the new kind of army was so great that it carried over into another great album, Underground Network. Well, uh, you could also, but they also got a new band member and they got a whole new producer at Fat Wreck as well. They had more money. <laughs> I'm just saying, it just carried over. All right. Their no, creativity yeah, carried nobody, over. Nobody's mistaking Matt's opinion of uh, For Blood and Empire after this video. That's, that's for sure. Uh, All right, well, let me do the next one because I want to give my first D <laughs> the people or the gun, which is very close to being my bottom tier anti flag <laughs> record. Uh, it's pretty close. Um, I think I texted you. I hadn't listened to this one since it came out. And I was like, am I like crazy or is this album just like fucking terrible? <laughs> And yes, it's uh, it's pretty bad, I think. Um, and you know, this is why maybe, in my perspective, I gave Bright Lights a little bit more of a little cushion because I really hate this record. I don't even think I really like more than one song on it. So this one is a hard <laughs> D for me. So yeah, I, I'm gonna. I agree with you, but I see. I yeah. I had Bright Lights and I had People Are the Gun both in my D tier. And then I looked at it this way, where like bright lights was kind of like being waterboarded. It was like a slow, painful death. This one is just, it's so fast. 11 songs, 30 minutes. This is just like a shot to the head. So for people or the gun, <laughs> I'm taking the gun here and I'm going to just bump it up slightly because it tortured me a little less than the last one. I'm going to put it in C. Uh -huh. God. So I did my list. I did my list totally wrong, John. So this is also a C for me. So if you can squeeze this into C, it was a quick one, like you said. Said. Um, but yeah, this is C. It's a crappy album. You could just tell the band is deteriorating and they suck at this point. Um, and, it, and there's there's a little glimmer of hope I think coming coming in after this album. Uh, and I'll take us into that one. And that one's going to be the general strike. Is that correct? Yeah. So yeah. this one, they kind of get back to the roots a little bit, I feel like. And I'm putting this one in B. So there was a little glimmer of hope with this album that, okay, maybe they're going to get back to their old ways. Um, and that was a complete lie. But, uh, <laughs> but yeah, I'm putting this in B. All right, Lewis, what are you doing with uh, General Strike? Uh, I don't think I'm as optimistic about Matt on this one. Um, I mean, this one's not, this one is a C for me. I think it's a marked improvement over the people or the gun, uh, but I really not blown away. And I was like really shocked that people really like this record. I think it's great. And mm. that it got like a reissue after like a decade. Like, like I Did saw like really? they re put it out and I was like, who gives this shit? But I guess <laughs> people do. Uh, like, I guess this is somebody's mo uh, underground network, right? Because this might have been, like, the album that came out after they got into Antiflag, and maybe that's why they like it so much. But nothing special here. I would not really come back to this one very often. It's probably a D, but a C, just because it's the name of the game. So, wow. See, yeah. I, I agree with Matt. I like this one. I, I, yeah. I don't know if it's because the last two were so bad, but I think the first two songs are, are really good. Uh, 
I think neoliberal anthem, it's it reminds me of uh For Blood and Empire a lot. Yeah, and I, I think, you know, Broken Bones is a song they play live all the time. But this this is a good uh like Matt said, fake out renaissance for us because we yeah. uh, we know it's uh we know what's coming next. But yeah, I, I like this one of like the later catalog. This is by far uh my favorite. But uh Lewis, if you want to uh take us into the next one here, American Spring, uh go for it. Uh, this one is uh, another D. So I guess whatever renaissance you had uh, fell on its face. So I'm going to put this one into the D category. I don't really like this album at all. Um, I actually think like the first two tracks kind of like set your expectations poorly for the album. If I remember, like they're pretty decent. And then it just goes off the rails pretty quick. So solid D. Uh, D uh, I don't know. American Spring. It was dead on the vine. <laughs> all right, Matt. American Spring. What do you think? Yeah, this is going to be a D for me. It's just, uh, I don't even think I would use it as a, a coaster for my coffee table. Um, you know, this is... this Gone is just, to, I guess. This is just a D. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah, I I, uh, I know Lewis and I both do this. Like, we, we look up if anybody's done, like, a rankings before. We kind of see the list. And for some reason, this is the this one I kept seeing, like, high up. And I know a lot of people like Brandenburg Gate. I think that song sucks. Like, it... It sounds like a bad against me song, in my opinion. This this is my least favorite anti flag album, and it's it's not even close. And just seeing how bad some of these get, like that's saying something. Like American Spring yeah. is awful. We could see why there's no American Summer, but we do go into the next one, uh, Matt. If you want to take us into American <sighs> Fall, I'm curious what you're gonna say about this one. A little departure. John, it's been a while since I, uh, I've been on an episode and uh, I dropped the ball with this one. Uh, American Spring was so bad that I couldn't handle American Fall. I didn't listen to it. I didn't play it. Um, I just went right into 2020 Visions. So I, I, don't, I don't have a rank for this one. So if you guys want to talk about this, uh, you can, but... I have nothing to say about this. All right. Well, Lewis, I'll just say something briefly and I'll let you get into it. Uh, I think this is a big improvement, Matt. I'm sorry you didn't listen to it, but I honestly, I don't think you'd like it. But I think those first two songs are actually really good. Like American Attraction, it doesn't sound anything like an Annie Flag song, but it was getting stuck in my head. Like every time I listened to this, I was like singing it downstairs. Uh, I, I think this, like I said, big improvement over spring. So I'm I'm gonna, actually going to put this in the B tier. Um, the reason it's not higher is because some of the back half reminds me of like Rancid B-sides. And like Rancid hasn't had a good album in 20 years either. So that's not necessarily a good thing. But uh, Lewis, what, what do you think about American Fall? American Fall. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> uh. Uh, yeah, I'm actually in the same tier as you. It's going to be a B. Um, and maybe it's blasphemy that I have bright lights in this above the general strike for some reason, but I connected a lot more with American Fall. I was really surprised that I liked this record. Uh, mm -hmm. This was one of the few that I had to force myself to listen to that I went back and listened to it again just because I was like, oh, I think that was pretty decent. Uh, so definitely a highlight of the later catalog and definitely a big improvement over uh, American Spring for sure. So. Yeah, the, the one thing I noticed too, like the second song, Criminal, is like that the whoa o's are like identical to the ones in Press Corps. I don't know if that's intentional or what, oh, yeah. but uh, all right, Matt, you were so excited to get into 2020 Vision that you completely skipped over an album. So I bet you have a lot prepared to, uh, to say about this one. What, what no, are you doing with it? Yeah, so. <laughs> You know, 2020 vision, you know, I don't know, John. It's like we look at the cover, you know, we see Trump was their inspiration for this. You know, this album makes me really hope that Trump never gets elected again because <clears throat> that inspiration created such a shitty fucking album that I hope he never wins again so they don't make another shitty album like this. This is D. This is complete garbage, this album. And I, I don't know how they drew garbage inspiration from Trump. He's on the cover, right? I mean, you think this would have yeah. been a banger. Remember, like, 
you know, how like George Bush and everything like that made oh, Rock album, Against Bush right? was sick. Yeah, yeah. No yeah. Effects had some great songs because of Bush. I think Andy Flag came out with some great stuff because of Bush. And then they had this guy, Trump. You think they would have a masterpiece, you know, something, this great A, and it was complete dog shit. So that's a D. <laughs> All right. Lewis, what are you doing? I know you don't like this either, but I want to hear your rebuttal to what Matt said. <laughs> I don't have a rebuttal. It's a D. This, this album sucks too. Uh, I, I tried to listen to what's Division is the re-release with more tracks. It was just like, it was just like if you found a pile of shit and then you took a shit on top of it. <laughs> it was, I really dislike this record. Um, uh, and I, I like that Matt's main reason to not get Donald Trump elected again is for that anti flag for putting out <laughs> records. So hard D, big support. All right. Well, guys, I'm sorry. I, I actually like this one a, a little bit. I think there's like three or four decent songs on here, which is more than I could say for People Are the Guns, American Spring, Bright Lights. Maybe Baby C is better, but I, I knew that I knew that Lewis hated it, so I wanted to go B. Because I don't think it's that bad. Is it? Is it great? Of course not. But uh, oh, if it was my hierarchy of D's, it would it would be the first D probably, and the third one for me, if that makes sense. I think yeah. the American Springs my last D. I think the singles on here, like Christian Nationalists and the Disease, are pretty catchy. Like they're more in the vein of American Attraction, like that newer anti flag song. Yeah, but they're cringy. They're cringy. The it, lyrics are so yeah. cringy. Yeah. <laughs> Like if you take it at face value, it's probably not a great song, but it, they were stuck in my head, and I I have to yeah. at least give uh, some points for that. And it, like I said, it's better than uh, the last few. But Lewis, we are we're wrapping up here. We're on the, yeah. finally on the last album. This one came out like what six days ago, maybe not even. So none of us that ha have had a lot of time to spend on this. But I mean, I'm pretty confident with where I'm putting it. Where are you putting it? So I only got one spot left, um, and it's probably too deserving. Of that's too high. Too it's too getting too high of a spot there. But I'm putting it in as C, just because I thought back to those other three records, and I like this one. I don't like this one, <laughs> but I don't like it as little as I like those other three. Which is funny now that you like 2020 Vision so much, but. Uh, I know. I know. Matt probably has. I know Matt has some thoughts on all of the compilations or like the people joining in or the um, what is the word I'm looking for here, features. but the contributions. Yeah. yeah, yeah, the featured players and stuff. But at least they're trying to do something different. I haven't had a lot of time with it. I'll give it a C. I I, I listened to the full record and didn't turn it off. So it's a C for me. Nothing special. Matt, <laughs> oh, go off on it. Yeah, man. So. I don't know. It's a new album. I listened to it. Um, when I opened it up on Spotify, <laughs> there was just too many words, John, just everywhere. I'm like, what is this? Like, how many people need to be on a song? You know, they're, they're trying to bolster themselves or pick themselves up to make them sound better, but it, it made them sound worse. If you look at the credits for each song, there's five writers for each song. So you think they would have had some good songs, wrong, horrible songs through and through. Too many features on here. Um, you know, lies they tell our children is that any flag after 2006 is good. You know, those are, those <laughs> are lies. I mean, any, it's just horrible. Like, uh, I'm, I like anyone watching this, I'm not trying to gatekeep, but just any flag, do any flags horrible. Don't listen to it. Just try to live in the past and listen to their old stuff and it'll be a lot better and you'll be a happier person. I hope you listen to American fall and it's like your favorite record now. <laughs> Yeah, I, I'm I'm pretty similar to both of you guys. I expected nothing from this album. But I, when I saw the album art, uh, when I saw that everything is in, all in caps, like they've turned into a Japanese band with all these like guest speakers, like he said, I expected nothing. But I didn't expect the worst song on here to be the one with Rise Against and Bad Religion because I, I think the fight of our lives is is the worst song Annie Flag has ever recorded. And, and that's saying something like, I, I don't know if I made it to the end of any of these songs. I, I hated this album, but it's, it may be slightly better than American Spring. I haven't decided yet because I haven't had that long to spend with it. And honestly, I don't plan on spending any more time with it either. So it's going to sit in D. Can't get any lower than that. So 
that's going to wrap it up, guys. I mean, a- any closing remarks other than oh, Matt? Yeah, John, you put, you put mine in A. That oh, goes down to D. Oh, I thought you said A. It's, it's no, it's D. Is D. Come on. <laughs> I have. I would like to request uh, an official uh, third place S spot for mine, if you don't mind. And because we didn't match it because it's a full length, but it is the Bouncing Souls anti flag PYO split. Which to this day, in my opinion, is the best split yeah. I've heard by any punk bands. This would have easily been an S tier for me if we were ranking EPs. I like all the tracks by all the bands. It looks like we all feel the same way. We at least wanted to call it out. So, Matt, yeah. I'm I'm assuming you feel the same, right? Yeah, definitely S tier. Uh, you know that one is neck and neck with me for like Common Rider and Against All Authority, and then this one, um, neck and neck. Like it can go either way. Any way you look at it, you know they can go either way, interchangeable with best splits. Um, but yeah, definitely great album right there. Great album. Or yeah. Great split. I'm waiting for them to put this uh, on Spotify. I don't on know. Spotify. Yeah. Byo has been. They've been putting like the rancid no effects pops up yeah. once in a while and then it disappears. I don't. I don't know is what's that, going on with it. Is I don't that a color one, Lou, or no? Is that just black? I think it's black. Yeah. Some black. I'm pretty sure. Yeah. A couple of theirs are colored, though. All right. So I don't know where I found this one randomly. Yeah. Anybody? Sorry. Anybody have anything else to say before we wrap up this very positive video? Uh, I, you know, guys, Matt said he didn't want to gatekeep, but he's right too. Um, shouldn't listen to any anti flag prior to <laughs> Blood or Empire. Yeah. <laughs> then just call it a day, and. Uh, and then if they ever put out a greatest hits album, just skip over the tracks that aren't on those records. Yeah. All right. So that's going to wrap it up. Thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure you like, subscribe, do all that nonsense, and we'll see you next time.